I have the sense in Nia, and this is unlike any other thing that I experience, that it's new every time. I mean, I just keep learning more about myself and how to be me and be healthy in this world. And it keeps me so positive. I just, I just love that. And it's an amazing tool to help managing my body's conditions. Well, hello and welcome to the Nia Dancing Through Life Community Spotlight. My name is Christina May Wolf, and I am your host and guide on a tour through the stories and people of the global Nia community. Now, we call this video series the Dancing Through Life Community Spotlight, and that dancing through life is really important. In Nia, we have a principle, a concept, an idea that we practice and embody and live Nia not only on the dance floor, but off the dance floor in our dance through life. And our guest today so beautifully and perfectly embodies that principle. Today, I am joined by Gabrielle McGee, a Nia black belt from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Gabrielle began her Nia journey in 2009, and her story will inspire you. Welcome, Gabrielle. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you, Christina. It is an honor and a privilege and a delight to be with you today. So Gabrielle, start us off by sharing your Nia story. How did you discover and step into your first Nia class and where has it taken you? As many, many wonderful things have come to me in my life, Nia arrived randomly. I was in a period of life as a young adult where I was going to concerts often. I have always loved to dance, especially to live music. And living in Santa Fe, there are a lot of baby boomers <laughs> and the older generation of people. And I was dancing in the parking lot of a brewing company at a reggae show. And an old man came up to me, <laughs> man I did not know. And he was watching me dance. And he told me that I should go to Kelly Ray's Nia class, <laughs> which was at a fitness studio at the time. I had never been, and I had a lot of prejudice. I was very resistant, like, I can't hang with these people, <laughs> these snobby people. So I would go, and I went to a class, I mean, maybe a week or two later, but I would go and wear like Edgar Allan Poe t-shirts. <laughs> At the time, I didn't even shave my armpit hair. I mean, I was very, very, relaxed in how I kept myself. And I stood in the back for, I don't know how long, I, months I stood in the back of the class. I did not show myself, but Kelly was very, very friendly, <laughs> approached me as she does all her new students with just the welcoming energy. And I decided I have to go back. I mean, I just became kind of immediately addicted to the way that she was teaching. There was something magnetic about that. Like there was like, a, okay, she's got, she, I don't know who these people are, <laughs> but Kelly has this under control. <laughs> so I went with so much joy and I smile often now. I'm not sure in the beginning, if I smiled quite as much as I do now, but I know that I felt an inner smile every time I went. And I wasn't particularly out of shape, but um, I am a type one diabetic. I've always had a really rocky relationship with my body. And it's just been a roller coaster of what can it do and when can it do it? And I noticed as I began and developed my Nia practice, and this was 2010, I started regularly going to classes almost every day. I just heard my body shifting. It was like something was waking up in my body. I felt an ability to control my blood sugars using movement and to really use my spirit energy and my positive emotions to change my physical form. 
And I wasn't particularly looking for fitness. It was the joy. It was the fun of being in class. And over time, I, you know, have developed many relationships. We can talk about that later. It just became everything that I now know through my training in the uh, was happening early on. I didn't know it at the time, but it was really happening. That's what kept me coming back to class. It's just wonderful. Well, and I, and I especially love your, your candor about the resistance when you first stepped in. You said that you kept finding the joy, you kept finding that, that inner smile. But what was it that ultimately took you from a feeling of being separate in the back of the room to being part of? What was that? I think it was the lightness of, of being in that place where everyone in the room is together through our, be it the 52 moves, or we have the focus of class. There's always a tie that binds in a NIA class. And that makes me connect to people with whom I may have nothing else in common. But when we're in class together, we have this in common and it's very intimate. And we're all experiencing shifts in our body and shifts in our emotions and shifts in our thoughts that make it so connected. I have taken the time in the last decade to travel to classes. And now with the pandemic, I zoom into classes, often with communities I have never been with before and teachers I don't know. And that's always takes me back to that first class where I don't know my teacher. I don't know my fellow students. I know nothing. And yet it feels connected. And that's like a family kind of feeling. And yet it's not obligatory. It's choice. And that sense of, of choosing what I'm doing and it feeding me positive energy is medicine. I mean, it really is the empowering sensation of freedom and confidence that can transform my body. I mean, it, it can lead me on to greater things and possibility. I don't know of, of any other activity I've ever done that is quite like that. Other than, you know, I am going to say live music is like that. In this age of pandemic, I miss this idea of being pressed in with thousands of people <laughs> gyrating together. And that's something that can really help with, with depression and with anxiety. And, you know, I've got all this trauma with physical problems in my body, but that's caused me to have a lot of depression. And I don't feel depressed with my neo practice. I feel so open. And so everything's possible. And I take that in every class, every time I step in, every day I do a neo class, I step in with, I don't know what's going to happen, but anything's possible. Well, and what you touch on, Gabrielle, is this, the third pillar that we reference in Nia, we've got movement, we've got mindfulness, and then we've got connection. And then that connection both happens with others in these tethers that form through the music, through the movement, whether it's virtual or, or live in person. But then, as you've just said, that connection in the collective also deepens the connection inside. And I think that's, like you said, for you, it supported you with depression and in, in a cultural epidemic of depression and anxiety, I feel like that there's this magic medicine in there. So you touched on something really profound that I want to back up to where you shared how, when you started to practice, you began to notice how you could did you say regulate your blood sugar or really connect to your body in a new way? I would love for you to share more about that. I mean, I'm, I'm a black belt in NIA. And for those who don't know, that is a higher level of training and that I have set through many, many trainings and much knowledge and information has been passed, which is something I love about NIA. In class, as I use the NIA technique, I can regulate my energy levels. So I can regulate how much energy I'm using externally and pushing outward and how it's going to return in my body. And I actually use that physically, mentally, and emotionally. 
if I'm surprised, if I go to a, a sensation of surprise, then I may be outputting a lot of energy. And how do I bring it back? I can pull in. In Nia, we talk about, we have sensations of fitness, right? So we have like flexibility and agility and stop, start action. And we have strength and mobility. And all of those use different amounts of energy. And it's just the truth of the physical world. And as a diabetic, I'm responsible for managing my blood sugars, which is very difficult. And blood sugars can shift with emotional responses. They can shift with physical energy as well. And in Neo, we have this opportunity to meet the mark, the mark being our choreographic cue, using different levels of energy. If I come into class and my blood sugar is a little on the low side and I don't want it to drop anymore, I don't want it to go too low, I can use less energy. I can move more gently to keep my energy to myself. The opportunity is also there for me to take away from how I interact with others. And what I believe is true about Nia and, and good instructors do this, they create a safe space. I always feel safe when I go into a Nia class. I've actually never experienced a Nia teacher who's not doing this. I trust Nia instructors know that this is their responsibility to keep a safe space so that I don't have to interact with anyone if it's not safe for me. And that makes it okay for me to come in with my vulnerability in my body and know that I will go through a class and step out safely. And this happens now, I'm an experienced practitioner, so it happens for me fluidly, but I've worked on it for years and spent a lot of time realizing when is it that I'm using too much energy? And it's always a choice for me to pull it back and pull back or put out if I need to. For instance, as a, as a diabetic, sometimes we have really high blood sugars, in which case we want them to drop. So we want to like really use more energy, but also be relaxed. And there are stress hormones in our brain that can cause our blood sugars to rise. And this is true in everybody. It's just that people who are not diabetic have a system that controls that, that works. And diabetics systems are needing some assistance. And so through choosing choices of intensity levels, and external energy output, internal energy, withdrawing my energy, I can change my blood sugar levels and make them more stable. And I'm really learning as I get fit, I mean, I'm very fit, <laughs> thanks to Nia now, but I'm learning how to control those levels more accurately. And it just gets better and better. It's over time, it has just gotten better and better. And I've had some rocky, rocky experiences doing Nia where I've dropped too low. I've had low blood sugars and I'm learning how to titrate my energy levels more and more. And I love that. And I love that I have the sense in Nia, and this is unlike any other thing that I experience that it's new every time. I mean, I just keep learning more about myself and how to be me and be healthy in this world. And it keeps me so positive. I'm just, I just love that. And it's, it's an amazing tool to help managing my body's conditions. Mm -hmm. Well, and Gabrielle, I feel like you're such a powerful embodiment of the truth that Nia can be used as a tool for self-healing, self-knowledge, self-optimization. I think that so many people living with chronic illness, whether it's diabetes or, or something else, can feel totally disempowered by their body and unable to move or, or pursue health or well-being. And you have just demonstrated through your, your life and through your practice how you've been able to be in deeper relationship with your body with type one diabetes and manage it through movement and mindfulness. It's so, huh, you just are so inspiring to me. Also, just in hearing you speak, it is so clear that your 
embodiment, your command, your impeccability with the curriculum, the education, the knowledge, the principles is part of who you are. And so much of what you are talking about, for those of you who may be watching and don't know, when Gabrielle was talking about managing energy and becoming aware of energy, that comes from the Nia Brown Belt primarily, although it shows up in other places, but that is one level of the, the body and life path. And so I'm curious, Gabrielle, going all the way back to white belt, which is the first step in the journey, what called you to step into your white belt and what year did you step into your first white belt training? I took my first white belt training in 2013 with Kelly Ray Oyen. She's my mama, <laughs> my Nia mama. <laughs> I do believe that white belt is the ultimate Nia belt. <laughs> Even though it's the first belt, I consider it the ultimate. <laughs> but brown belt is my favorite belt. <laughs> Absolutely. Because I, I consider myself an energy warrior. 2013 was a very transitional year for me. And I stepped in just out of curiosity. I mean, I just didn't know. I wanted more. I wanted to know what the brass tacks of Nia were. I consider them to be hidden in the white belt. All the belts beyond are fascinating and have enriched me so much. But that white belt, that's the brass tacks. I did want to say today that one of my favorite principles in Nia is from Brown Belt. And it is love, fear, peace. You know, I, I keep a teaching license in that I like to teach people to step in to Nia, people, random people in the grocery store. <laughs> I want them to come and experience this healing power. So I am a Nia teacher. And love, fear, peace is very important to me in that I believe that fear can be turned into love at all times and that these things are the same but different and i find so much peace in that i have experienced a lot of fear in my life i grew up in a in a very unstable household and have been very depressed and was diagnosed with diabetes at age 14 i'm now experiencing kidney failure and yet i have just this unlimited amount of of love and i think that is due to the the weights that i've experienced and i sometimes will meet people who stay very plateaued in their life and they don't they don't allow themselves or for whatever reasons i don't know don't go dark ever <laughs> And I have found my darkness to be like a trampoline <laughs> to get me right back up into these experiences of joy that are just wonderful. I have to thank the darkness for the light. And I believe that. And I think that if I can continue to transform these burdens I find in my body into lightness in my body, that I have really empowered myself to experience peace. And that's what I believe to be true of principle seven of Brown Belt, that love, fear, peace. It's just wonderful and so true. So sometimes I find people who, they're really happy all the time. <laughs> and they're never angry. And I don't trust that quite so much. <laughs> I'm like, don't you want to, aren't you mad at anything? <laughs> so, so sometimes I find that anger and as long as I don't stay with it, you know, the, the trick is to transform it into something else. I mean, I'm using that now as my kidneys have been failing. Whoa, it sounds horrific, right? I guess it is. But it's really inspiring me to realize there are so many things in my life for which I'm grateful people, places, experiences, certainly my Nia practice. I've experienced so much community love and support and that is due to showing up and revealing myself and not being afraid to say, hey, I got problems, <laughs> right?
And we all go through embarrassing things and points at which we feel ashamed, but that is not all of who anyone is. And it's certainly not all of who I am. So I know that, you know, when I feel my joy and I share it, that it comes right back to me. That's the, the invitation, right? Is like sharing. Sharing comes back. It always comes back. Mm -hmm. There is so much that you shared in there that I want to loop back around on. The first is you mirroring something that I've, I've noticed in people who live into their biggest selves, their, their, their most authentic and alive lives. And that is this ability to transmute, transform the darkness, or sometimes I have a less poetic name for it, into fertilizer, you know, taking some of the excrement that life delivers <laughs> and composting it into that fertilizer to fuel or rebound the new growth. You show that that's what you've done again and again and again. And it takes courage, as you said, to show up and be seen and to be vulnerable and to be raw and to ask for support and demonstrating that you shine a light of possibility so that if people don't feel comfortable or safe there yet, that they know that it is possible. So it's, thank you for sharing the totality of your human experience. In Nia, you know, we talk, one of the principles of the body's way is the body is balanced in yin and yang. We have both the light and the dark, the positive and the negative, the joy and the sorrow, that they have to be two sides of the same coin and that to live on just one side is unbalanced and not whole. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. The Santa Fe Nia community has really it's impressed me over the, over the years from walking in the, the first day and being like, I don't know what's up with these people. <laughs> like Now I'm like, they're like my family. And I think about them all the time and, you know, and I, I miss them right now. I'm out of Santa Fe and receiving treatment for my kidney failure. I've received so much support from people who I have never met in person. And that's thanks to this dynamic community we have via Zoom and just via the way we communicate in Nia Technique, which is so unique. It's such a unique business model. And thank you, Christina, for like, carrying on so well. I mean, it's just wonderful the way we're connecting. I'm not a big fan of technology, but I am adapting as well as I can. And I'm grateful. I'm just grateful for the inspiration that we give one another. And there's so many different people that we have in our NIA community. And the differences bring us closer together to really, really realizing what we have in common. Mm -hmm. And there's more in common than there are differences. For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to back up. You shared that you teach Nia through outreach and through welcoming new people in, just like that old man welcomed you in, in at the, the concert and invited you to check out a Nia class. Why do you feel compelled to tell someone at the grocery store, invite them into a Nia class? I feel better doing Nia. <laughs> it's really quite simple. It's very childlike. I mean, I consider myself a Nia addict. I need to do Nia. <laughs> um, but I think it's available for everyone to feel better. It's that simple. I want people to feel better. I want them to feel confident in their bodies. I want them to feel loved. And I want them to feel like they're part of something that is there for them no matter what. And that is what's true of Nia, especially with our online situation now. It's available all the time, any hour of the day, given the global schedule. That's what I want for everyone. I want everyone to be able to have an outlet to feel better. 
normally I like to ask, you know, what obstacles have you overcome in your life with and through Nia? And you've shared a lot. You mentioned the the home or the childhood that you that you grew up in, your diabetes, depression. So my my question is, how have you found the ability to transcend or work with or partner with these experiences through your Nia practice? I have never had much of a discipline in my life before Nia. And I, I am very proud to say that Nia is a discipline for me now. It's not only something I respect, but I take time to study Nia. And I am a Nia choreography geek. <laughs> I'm an absolute geek. I even know choreography that had nothing to do with my time period in Nia, <laughs> going way back to Carlos Rosas. <laughs> there is no limit to my wanting to study it. And what that's given me is sort of a, Debbie would love this word, a scaffolding. <laughs> I have a scaffolding of discipline in my Nia practice that goes beyond just stepping in and showing up to class after class, anytime I'm studying Nia choreography, I am developing my own sense of choreography and how I can use movement combinations to control my blood sugar, to control my emotions and how I feel about whatever else is going on outside of Nia. So that for me is, it's actually new. I mean, I didn't grow up with a religion. I was not a very good student. I make good grades as I'm pretty clever, but I wasn't a disciplined student. So that sense of discipline in me and that purpose is such a gift. And that's something that I did not expect at all from a fitness practice. And that's something that really is built into me a if I want it, it's there for me. And I want it. I can really relate to your, your share. I too have not historically been a disciplined person, but there's something about Nia that it has in, in me inspired this passion for the work. And I love the hashtag Nia nerd. Like I'm a total Nia nerd. I geek out over the principles and the practices and the the moves and the technique that there's something so magnetic about the complexity and the simplicity of the practice and how many different ways it can be woven into not only class, but in, into life. And that discipline is what I've witnessed in myself and, and you shared it and in others that makes the difference between somebody really understanding and applying the magic in their body, in their life or not. What inspires and lights you up? New choreography is really in Nia technique, my jam. I am so turned on by a new kata. I just, it's like, there's really nothing better. I'm, I'm the kind of person who looks at the calendar and I'm like, this new routine's coming out on this date, I'm in. <laughs> There's not a whole lot I get much more excited about. Those of you watching, you may not know that Gabrielle was working behind the scenes on the recent New Year Routine Express. Uh, so thank you for your contributions uh, on that. And why does new choreography light you up and excite you? What is it? I it's the new neural pathways. I yes. mean, really, it just builds brain. It empowers my brain to keep going. It's like the anti-Alzheimer's. <laughs> for real. Right? For, for real. real. It's, it is really true. And I have felt it heal my own brain. And, you know, when I have hypoglycemia, parts of my brain die. And so I can rebuild it by a new combination of movements. These simple neurological realities are built into our Nia practice. I mean, that is, it is true. It is why Nia is healing to the body. I will also share though, that 
during the creation of Express, I had what is called a dropped foot. So my left foot had, I had a hypoglycemic episode and my left foot did not, it didn't return. So I couldn't, I couldn't lift it. So we have dorsiflexion in the body and that is the lifting of the foot by the ankle. And I wasn't able to do that. So it was a really funny time creating Express for me. It actually challenged me to be in mental realm with the creation of the routine. So often I dance. I mean, I'm a dancer. My spirit is a dancer. And so I'm naturally inclined to movement in my body. But I use that so often in learning choreography. And I... I learned and created express using mental and emotional realms primarily and that my body was not available to me. And so that was a wonderful experience. I mean, it was a transformational experience and having to use different tools that I've always got in my toolbox, but I don't always pay attention to as I stay busy moving. I wasn't able to move the same way and um, learned a lot from that, like from that experience. It was a different way of expressing myself. <laughs> now that I can dance express, <laughs> I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Well, and you touch on what may be new to some of the people watching, which is that we talk about these four realms of Nia, body, mind, emotions, and spirit, and say that Nia is a workout um, or a work end for your body. Yes, physically, um, but also for your mind, emotions, and spirit. And Gabrielle, you've touched on all of those and how even when the body is temporarily out of commission, that doesn't mean that the Nia practice needs to stop. It can still continue in these other realms. It's really powerful. Yeah. And that word temporary is very important. <laughs> right? Right. I always tell myself, whatever's happening is temporary. Change is constant. And that is always true. It's always true. I mean, I believe even if I am missing a pinky finger, I can tell myself I have it. Mm -hmm. Like I can believe that. I can believe it's there, even if it's not. And as long as I do that, I will have a healthy brain. So Gabrielle, is there anything else that you would like to share in our time together here? I mean, I just, I really am, I'm honored to be an inspiration for everyone who has struggled. And I know that I can appear much healthier than I actually am. And so I want that to be an inspiration for people that what you see is not always what is, and what is, is not always what can be. So believe, just believe in possibility. It's the best way to keep going, just like a child, believe in possibility. Mm. I just want that for everybody. So I would love to ask you a final question, or really it's, it's more of an invitation than a question. Complete the sentence with Nia or through Nia. Now I am secure. Gabrielle, thank you. Thank you for sharing your spirit and your story with me and with the global Nia community. Thank you, Christina. And thank you all for watching. We will see you next time on the Nia Dancing Through Life Community Spotlight.